I'm Julie Herman of Jaybird Quilts and Lazy Girl Designs and welcome back to the Lazy Angle Basic Series. This is the third video for the Stargazer Pillow. In our first video we went over fabric selection and cutting. In our second video we worked on putting together our Lazy Angle three-step blocks and today we are going to turn those blocks into a Stargazer Pillow. So let's get started. I have these two blocks on my machine and I want to make sure to preserve my points as I mentioned. So I want to sew with this one on top so that I'll be able to keep an eye on exactly where that point is. But when I do that, then I lose track of where that point is. So I have a couple choices. I can sew the length and hope it goes well. I can sew the first inch, stop, take it off and check. Or I can do what I'm going to do, which is I'm going to perfectly line them up. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to lift up my needle on my presser foot and I'm just gonna sew the last inch. And I'm gonna sew it from this side. If I sew it from the other side, I have to take it off and check. But if I'm sewing from this side, I can keep an eye on things and I can make sure that I don't lose that point. I'll go back on my leader ender and I'll show you what this looks like. And so here's what that looks like. You can see that my green point is a quarter of an inch in, which means when I go to sew my border on, I won't lose it. If anything here, you wanna make sure that your point is more than a quarter of an inch in. If it's more than a quarter of an inch in, you'll still see it and your background will just go to here and it'll be okay. If it's less than, that's when you're gonna lose it when you sew your border on and you definitely don't want that to happen. So now that that is sewn, I'm gonna put this back together, right sides together. And I'm simply going to start by sewing right on top of the stitching I've already done. No need to remove it. And then I'm just gonna be extra careful when I get to this point and use my stiletto to make sure that my needle goes directly in where the point is. Nice and slow and aim for my needle. Yep, there we go. And finish the length of the seam. And I'm gonna repeat with the other pair. And now that I have both done, I'm gonna go ahead and take them over to my iron and press both of the seams open. I've pressed both my seams open and now it's time to go ahead and sew my two halves together to complete my star. But I wanna make sure that I don't lose this point or this point or my end points. And I wanna make sure my center lines up. So there's a couple things I'm gonna do here to make sure all of that happens. First thing I'm gonna do is line up my two centers on top of each other and I'm gonna pin and I'm gonna pin enough into my um, project and away from my seam allowance that I don't need to worry about these pins when I do my sewing because some of the sewing I'm gonna do on this seam is gonna happen on one side and some of it's gonna happen on the other side. So I'm gonna put my pins far enough down. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is come over here and pin this corner. And if you know me, I, I often refer to myself as a minimalist pinner. I only pin when necessary. And this is definitely a time that I find necessary. Um, it helps to uh, aid in making sure that everything stays exactly where I want it to be at this stage of the process. Okay, so I've got pins at the ends, pins in the middle. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew this inch on this side, just like I did when sewing these two together. And then I'm gonna flip it and do the same on the top. And then I'm gonna sew the center, and then I'll show you where I'm gonna go from there. So first thing I'm gonna do is sew this inch. And that's gonna make sure that I don't lose this green point here um, where it's going to intersect with my border. Use my stiletto to hold everything nicely in place. Since I put my pins far enough into my project, I don't need to worry about sewing over those. They are out of the way. So back onto my scrap, use my snips to take this off. I'm gonna flip it and do the same thing on the other side. Now you could just sew the length of this seam. It might end up okay. Um, and if, if you wanna try, go for it. And if close enough is good for you, go for it. But this is how I make sure that everything lines up perfectly how I intended. At this point, I've put so much time and energy into it. I want it to be perfect and I don't wanna just mess it up at the end here just because I didn't take some extra time. So I can take those end pins out. And then I am going to sew from here 
where I started, keep an eye on that point and sew it to my middle. And then I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna come back from the other side. And that way I will have had visual on all of my points at all times when sewing this. And you can see for whatever reason, naturally, I'll zoom in, like right now this wants to kind of pull, I'm exaggerating, this way. Um, and it doesn't want to be flush with this green edge. So I'm just going to pull it a little bit to the right so that it is where I want it to be. And I'll use my stiletto to help hold it in place. And I'm going to slow down as I get to this point. And go right in there. Perfect. And I'm just going to sew it to the middle and stop a little bit past the center. Okay, now, so now I have this to the center sewn and this last inch and I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to pick back up at the end here and just sew over that little bit of stitching again. And now this time I can keep an eye on this point. And line back up. And you can see right now I am sewing with a dark gray thread um, for two reasons. One, I was piecing this with the dark gray, but I did that here so that you could see what I was doing. Um, if I was doing this just for myself, I would sew with a thread that matched this better because you might see that dark gray in the areas where the green and the green match up together. So it's time to take all my pins out and let's see how everything lined up. So that one turned out really good. That turned out good. My center, actually my center is what's off the most almost perfectly matches. Luckily, that's the thing that your eye is not going to be drawn to, but all the rest of them look great. So now um, I need to go ahead and press that. Now that I have my star all sewn together and pressed, it is time to go ahead and add my borders and directions for this are on page nine. You'll have two short ones for your right and left and two longer ones for your top and bottom. And um, normally you sew with the smaller item on top. So normal borders on a quilt, that's how you would go. But if we do that, we're going to lose track of all of our points. So just like we sewed other things with our points on top, we're going to do that here. So you can go ahead and pin this if you'd like, or you can just leave it loose. I'm just going to go put two pins well outside of the seam allowances, one at either end. And then I'm going to flip it over and sew from the star side. And I don't need to backstitch at the beginning and end of the first two borders. I, I will do that with the second two borders. So I'm just going to start here and I'm keeping an eye on where my white point is. Um, and this pin is actually kind of kind of be in my way. So I'm going to keep an eye on where my white point is so that I make sure that I start right there and don't lose that point. And I'm going to slow down as I get here, grab my stiletto, make sure I go right in where my green point is and keep sewing the border in place. So by sewing with the piece on the top and the border below, I ensured that I kept all of my points and that makes me happy since I've worked so hard on them. And you will see here that this one, I actually didn't even get to touch my point. I was a little bit further away, but it's okay since it's all background. Um, what's more important is that I didn't cut the end of the point off. So I'm just going to continue to repeat these steps. So the other side border on and then the top and bottom back stitching at the beginning and end of sewing the top and bottom borders on. I've gone ahead and added all four of my borders. And now this is what my stargazer star looks like so far. It's not a pillow yet, it's just a quilt top. And our next steps involve quilting it and adding an envelope back and binding. And as I mentioned in the first video with cutting, I am going to use some of my border print to make my envelope backing. Uh, if you've never made an envelope backing before, I have another pillow pattern called the Superstar Pillow, not to be confused with Stargazer, and I'm going to link to that here below, and you can watch the video for the Superstar Pillow, and I will show you how to go ahead, make this envelope back, add binding to finish your pillow cover, which you then can put over a pillow form to finish your Stargazer Pillow. I hope you really have enjoyed this video series. If you have, please be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and leave your comments with us. If you've not yet signed up for the Sew Along emails, you can do so at the link posted in the caption below. Our next video in our Sew Along series is going to be the Rhapsody Quilt. 
Rhapsody Quilt features a two-step block as well as many other basic blocks that we're going to cover. And now that you have made a beach ball, an apple pie table runner, and a stargazer pillow, you're an expert and ready to go. So I will see you here back next week to work together on the Rhapsody Quilt.